We take 126, don't go straight to 126A, go straight here. County Road 56. Kenosha Pass should be down there somewhere. Busy road for this KLX 250. Uh, I mean, then we can go into like a car gap like this. Brad, what's up over here? We're going on a, a pretty awesome adventure right now. I don't know, we're right now exploring Terry, uh, but we're gonna get off Terry all soon. We're gonna hop over to Kenosha Pass. And from Kenosha Pass, probably do Webster Pass. So this is what I love about the KLX 250 on exploring, you know? It's awesome for back roads, new intermediate riders and stuff like that. These roads are super slick because of the, uh, the sand and all that stuff. Terrio is known for uh, it's very loose gravel. I wouldn't say it's like uh, pea gravel, but it's kind of like mixed between sand and all that stuff. KLX 250 on a mini adventure trip, right? Sounds like quite the adventure, which on the KLX 250, of course, has its pros and cons. So this day, we were on a small adventure trip going from Colorado Springs to Terry all the way up through some back roads where the speed limits were about 25 to 30 mile an hour on the back roads. And of course, reaching destinations up to Kenosha Pass and other back roads. No camping on this one, but that one is definitely in the near future. Anyhow, highway? Forget it. This is where the KLX 250 struggled up in elevation. Above anything above 60 miles an hour was a nightmare. Not because 60 miles an hour is bad on the KLX 250, but more so because the cars drive 20 over the speed limit around here, making it ideal for 70, 80 mile an hour runs. Yeah, the KLX 250 cannot hit that speed in our elevation. Not to mention the gear I was wearing and of course the materials that my backpack were spending the night. Things becoming annoying. And I've done it countless of times and you know it's pretty cool the KLX 250. There's some um, some things you gotta consider too, like I'm not a big fan on riding uh, street bikes on really busy, dangerous intersections. I like hauling them to let's say a waypoint. That's another thing to consider. When the KLX 250, if it's a good, uh, what's it called, uh, exploring bike, a good uh, light adventure bike. We did all these places, Kenosha Pass and all that stuff. So you gotta, some things to think about. Elevation, how much you weigh, the gear you wanna put on, the extra weight on yourself, such as water and all that stuff. The areas a KLX 250 can take you is just downright awesome. I personally think if you mostly have dirt roads, county roads, and or old logging roads like this, a KLX 250 might be all you need, especially if you have roads that are 50-55 miles an hour. Sure, I have the 701 Enduro, but for some reason the KLX 250 feels comfortable, safe, more dirt bikey, but as soon as pavement hits, that is when the torture begins. Unfortunately, many of the roads in Colorado are high-speed roads, which is why I got the Husqvarna 701. See, it can do all these roads. If most of our roads were two lanes each way with speed, li speed limits up to 50 or 55 miles an hour, I would have sticked just with the KLX 250 or probably just the DRZ 400. Anyhow, after some time, we finally made it to Kenosha Pass and its neighboring trails. 
and what we thought was going to be a leisure ride ended up being a pretty technical steep jeep trail where the top started to pitch a hill climb of about 31 degrees from what the papers read of course. That thing is so rutted out. Nice. I believe we're almost there, but it's def luckily we're so tiny that <laughs> we can just squeeze right by. Wow. This is getting hard. So Kenosha Pass is definitely getting, uh, it gets pretty steep, obviously not hard, nothing that, you know, that requires a Jeep six inch lift or something, but enough to make it bumpy, you know, and all that stuff. So, you know, is the KLX 250 good for dual sport exploring? I mean, back there, like you saw on 24, those guys were going like 70 miles an hour, I had a car right on my ass, and uh, so, to answer the main question, did I enjoy the KLX 250 on this mini adventure trip? Yes and no. I think the solid answer would have been the DRZ 400 for this kind of trip. While the 701 might have been an overkill, the DRZ 400 would have been ideal. But the dirt roads and trails, the KLX 250 shined on them. Again, if all I had were these kind of speed runs and low mile, low mile per hour Highway runs, I think I would have just stayed with the KLX 250, as I really love how the KLX 250 feels just all around. Anyhow, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe. Definitely hit that bell button as it definitely helps my channel out. And I'll catch you guys on my next video.